This is the better way to do a dynamic search bar in Google Sheets. We're going to type in a search term here and then it will search the category that we specify up here. Okay, and it also doesn't care if we have upper or lowercase letters, so it's going to just search whatever. It's case insensitive. This is something that's improved upon from the last time I did a video using filtering and querying to do this same thing, but we did run into case sensitivity issues and the formula got a little bit more complicated than I wanted it to. Okay, let's dive in, but before we do, Take a second and like this video and subscribe to the channel. I do tech tutorials like this all the time, and I hope that you'll find something useful here. Now, let's look at the data that we're using. I've got a uh, mock transaction sheet here with, uh, you know, 200 or so rows of data from like a home budget sheet. This is taken from what I actually use, and I've just created a bunch of dummy data and amounts here. We've got place, amount, category, payment. And then over here, I have created named ranges. So we've got the category column, of course, right there in column D, the place column in column B, and then the whole thing I've got wrapped inside this named range called transactions. This is not necessary. It simply makes things easier when we're building out our formula. Now, if this is all you came here for, I will paste this in the description below and you can just take this formula and use it to your heart's content. This is what it looks like. And uh, let us duplicate this page and create this from scratch. So there's our formula. Let's get rid of this. And let's talk about what search does. So I'm gonna type in a couple random things over here. Let's do the search formula. Search finds the, uh, the first position of string found in text ignoring case. So if I'm looking for a K inside of this cell, it's gonna say, hey, that's the first letter in this word. That's, that's basically what search is doing. And actually, let's, let's not hard code this. Let's do this in C3, which is over here on our actual search term. And we'll put the K in right here. We'll do it uppercase, lowercase, doesn't matter. OG starts at the third space in this word. Uh, but here's where it breaks down. What if we wanted to search both H2 and H3? Well, it doesn't like that. It's talking about array formulas in here. It's, it's expecting to just have one cell to search one search term. However, if we combine this with filter, so if I wanna filter this range right here, which is a two by two range, two columns, two rows, and the condition I wanna use is search. Well, I can use that C3 search term, and then I can search the same sized column here, so H2 to H3, and we'll see that it does return Kroger, the Kroger line. Uh, if I type in CV or just C, then it will return the CVS line. So, it will search a, a range if we are filtering it so it knows that the condition to filter is going to take place over some other range of the same size. That's basically what we're doing here. That's this filter part. Um, so let us type that in here and show you this at work. We're gonna filter transactions, not transpose, transactions and we're going to search C3, and what we're going to search is this category or place column. Now we cannot reference just straight up like this, the cell C2. Let me show you what is going to happen when we do that. It's gonna say that doesn't work because it, it doesn't know to look in a named range this way. So what we use instead is the indirect function, which is going to give us a cell reference specified by a string, all right? So then we can include C2 and voila. Now it is searching that named range found in this C2 in our formula. And that's how we do the dynamic search bar. Everything else here is just to make stuff a little bit nicer and cleaner. So for instance, we want to sort that whole thing. So I'll wrap it all in a sort and then sort column. I wanna use the third column. 
So that is the amount. And then I want to have this descending. So it will start with the largest amount and sort down to the smallest amount way down here. All right, so sort is just to make things sorted a little bit nicer. And if we wanted to sort it by the uh, second column, the place, then the places would be in alphabetical order instead. I'm gonna resort back to the amounts. And then one more thing that we're gonna do, I'm gonna cut all of that. And then I'm gonna do this if statement. So this is checking if I have a search term up here. Let me show you what happens right now. If I don't have a search term, then it's just going to return all this stuff. And, you know, that doesn't do anybody any good. I don't want that to happen. So we're going to say if is blank. So whether this cell C3 is blank, if that is the case, then I just want to return an empty string. And then if that's not the case, I want to do my sorting, filtering, and searching. And boom. Now when it's blank, I've got nothing. And when I start typing stuff in here, then it will return the results. Would you mind liking this video? I hope this has been helpful for you. It was really nice for me to find out this better way to do a dynamic search bar. Again, I'll have the formula included in the description for this video, as well as this Google Sheet with the full working sample. So you can make a copy of that and then custom fit it to whatever you need to do for your own project. Hope it's helpful for you. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel. Hope you have a great one. You're awesome. Bye.